So, the debate ended a couple hours ago, and I have to say, this one was much less exhausting than the last one. And it was a pretty standard debate, pretty boring. Overall, again, I don't really think that winning is a very meaningful concept in formal debates, especially formal political debates, but overall, I would say that Pence probably won, if that term does mean anything. His goal has always been, as vice president, to present a more stable, formal image to the Trump presidency than the sort of chaotic image that Trump can often give off, which is both his strength and occasionally his weakness. In this debate, I think Pence exhibited that very well. He got all his points across pretty well, and there wasn't really anything that I think would have felt like a betrayal to his base in any serious way nor anything else which I think would be seriously alienating to Republican voters. That does bring up what is the point of these debates anyways. This is something that came up in the comments section and some of the other responses I got for the last video. The point of these debates isn't to win over people on the opposing side and suddenly have a left-winger or a right-winger realize that they should join the opposing faction. The primary goal of these debates is to help the turnout on either side, to appeal to people that might not vote for your side, but they definitely wouldn't vote for the other side, or to help isolate people from the other side and make them not vote for their candidate, even if they're not going to vote for you. From this debate, there's really only two main criticisms I'd have of Mike Pence. The first would be that he sort of failed to really bring out any of these contradictions that Trump was trying to bring out with Joe Biden, that is, contradictions between the radical and moderate ends of the Democrats. Kamala Harris has one of the most left-wing voting records of any Democratic senator, and that fact betrays the lie a bit that Joe Biden said last week in his debate when he said that you don't need to worry about these radicals because I am the Democratic Party. I'm the one in control. You don't need to worry about AOC or whoever because I'm the one that's running the show. So the radicals will all be sidelined in a Joe Biden presidency. This is just the same old Democratic Party. You don't need to worry about anything. Now, of course, having a VP candidate who has a bit different politics from the presidential candidate is hardly anything new. VP candidates are often selected to try and shore up a different part of the base that isn't covered as well by the main candidate. But the fact that we all know that Joe Biden isn't totally there and that he won't be able to totally control his own administration, means that his VP and other people that he's surrounded with will be even more important than they are in a regular presidency. Pence did get at this point a couple times, in particular with the Green New Deal stuff, which he connected back to AOC. So he was making those connections, and he was doing it relatively okay, but I don't think he really went at this point as much as he could have or should have. But overall, this is a relatively small criticism, and he did pretty well. The only other issue, really, is, like I've already said, the debate was pretty boring, and he didn't really land any blows that were particularly striking that I think are going to be clipped a lot. I don't know, I'm sure there will be a few things, but there wasn't anything that is really memorable. The moderation of the debate was, of course, very bad, but I don't know, I mean, I just expect that at this point, and I don't know why you wouldn't expect that. So it almost feels boring to go over it, but there are some interesting things from the bias of the moderator, so I'll go over it a little bit. I think the most glaring example of bias in this debate was there were at least two times, two times that I remember, there may have been more, when the moderator tried to bring up some sort of issue and pretended like the issue was primarily seen in Donald Trump when they were both clearly issues that were present with Joe Biden. The first was the issue of presidential health. The moderator brought this up and said, how big of an issue do you think is presidential health and how much do you think voters have the right to know about the health problems that are going on with the president? And we've especially seen this clearly in the past couple of days with Donald Trump getting sick. And the moderator was really focusing on that fact of Trump having gotten sick and Trump having hidden parts of his sickness from the public. And, I mean, it's not totally unfair. The moderator was right in saying that Trump's people had been a bit evasive on his current status once or twice. But Trump's doing fine, and his health problems are relatively minor, compared to Joe Biden, who obviously has a deteriorating mind, something which quite possibly could make it impossible to seriously fulfill his job as president, and will mean that he'll have to have other people fulfilling that job for him. 
We all know this. I mean, the evidence could not be more glaring for Joe Biden. Yet, when the moderator asked the same question of Kamala Harris, she didn't mention anything about Joe Biden the way she did when she was asking the question to Mike Pence. All she said to Harris was, how important do you think it is to be transparent with the public on the health of a president? The question essentially amounted to, how bad exactly do you think Orange Man is, and how good is it to do good things? The other instance where the moderator did basically the exact same thing is when she asked both VP candidates what their respective presidential candidates would do, if they lost the election, and if they would respect the democratic process. The Democrats have recently been saying explicitly that they're not going to accept the results of the election if they don't like them. Hillary Clinton literally said, win, lose, or draw, the Democrats should not accept the results of the election. However, that was of course ignored, and the question to Pence was, why exactly is your boss bad? And the question to Harris was, why exactly is Orange Man bad? So those were, I think, the two most glaring examples of bias in how the questions were asked by the moderator. Beyond that, many of the questions, probably about half of them, were basically, how bad exactly is Orange Man? I could go through a couple of them more in depth, but like I said, this is just boring. Like, what's the point of this? We expect these people to be biased. If you don't understand at this point, I don't, like, I, I don't know what to do for you. Go watch some Sargon videos or something until you realize the press is biased, and then you can come back here. But, okay, what else is notable about this debate? Especially Kamala Harris, because, as I've titled this video, Madam President, what's really interesting about this debate is, as I've already said, and as I'm sure we all know, there's a very good chance that Kamala Harris will be taking a much greater role in a potential Biden administration because of all the obvious problems that Biden has been having. It is even quite possible that Kamala Harris could be America's first Madam President. So this is our little sneak preview at that. And one of the most notable things I'm coming away with from this debate is just how much of an annoying person she is. She reminds me quite a bit of Hillary Clinton in that regard, and I know if any progressives see this, they're going to say, oh, that's sexist. You're just saying that because they're both, like, powerful women or whatever. And it's so annoying. Now, I don't really care about these stupid ist charges. They're just stupid. They're just a way of left-wingers trying to shame anyone that they disagree with. But with that said, this isn't because they're both powerful women or whatever. There's lots of female politicians out there. There's even lots of left-wing female politicians out there. And they don't all give off the same vibe. The clearest time when this came through was when Mike Pence was trying to respond to some comment that she was making against him, and she said, I'm talking. It's not what she said, it's her delivery that's so annoying. Especially since both Biden and Harris are trying to be return to normalcy candidates, and they're trying to say that we're the real adults, while Donald Trump is the crazy dude in the White House. But when someone gets in her way, when someone tries to call her on the things that she's saying, she ends up looking just as childish as anyone else. And another thing to keep in mind about Kamala Harris, if she does in fact end up becoming Madam President, or Madam Vice President, is that she's already told us explicitly that she'll just lie whenever she wants to. Now, I don't know, maybe I should just admire her honesty, because we know this is just how all politicians act. But there's something about her brazenness in past statements that she's made that just annoys me a bit. I don't know, I guess I like the veneer of pretending that politicians could be honest. What I'm referring to, in case it's not clear, is Kamala Harris, during the leadership debates for the Democratic Party, told a story about how she was the first black girl to go to the school that she went to, or in the county, or I don't know. I can't really remember what exactly the story was specifically, but that doesn't really matter. The point was of her story that the only reason she was able to be the first whatever was because of forced busing, which transported her out of her neighborhood to this school. The relevance of this story was Joe Biden had just said that he was against forced busing, a policy which is overwhelmingly quite unpopular. Kamala Harris herself wasn't even trying to bring this policy back, but she brought this up 
to accuse Joe Biden of being a racist, and she further brought up that he had apparently been working with some segregationist senators to further insinuate just how bad he was. And when Madam President was asked about this after becoming Joe Biden's VP nominee, she just laughed and said, it's a debate. And again, I don't know. I mean, I should expect this. I know this is what politicians are like. It's a debate clearly means either I lied then because of political advantage or I'm lying now because of political advantage. This will hopefully not be America's Madam President. Thanks for watching. Please donate if you enjoy this content. And please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell and share these videos with anyone who you think might enjoy them. And a special thanks to my donors, Emmett Vestry, The Right Cafe, yourself, Cepheus Rex, Lita, Charismatic Byzantine, Quo Pregranator, Haxorius, Adzutko, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringe Walker, and Zian Harris. Thanks to all my other donors, and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.